Okay, uh, welcome back. In this lecture 20, I will discuss about polymer stereochemistry and Ziegler nut coordination polymerization. These are the topics which I plan to cover in this lecture 20. Let us discuss constitutional isomerism which was previously called structural isomerism. Molecules that have the same overall co chemical composition that is same molecular formula but differ in connectivity are called constitutional isomerism. For example, if I talk about polymers, look at these three structures, uh, they have same molecular formula C2H4O, but their connectivity are different in each molecule. So, these are example of constitutional isomerism which were previously called structural isomerism. Other examples like polymethyl methacrylate and polyethyl acrylate or you can imagine other polymers like some of the examples are shown here. So, these are the example this pair, this pair and this three are the example of constitutional isomers. Next we will talk about stereo isomers. Now, stereo isomers have the same connectivity, but they differ in their configurations. What are configurations? If you recall from, from your early chemistry knowledge that conformation is the relative orientation of atoms in space which can be achieved independent of the special change in changes that can occur by rotation about single bond. So, if we can get different special arrangements by rotating the single bonds then we do not call them as different configuration, but configuration other than those configuration as the relative orientation in the space of the atoms. Whereas, when we get different orientation just by rotating the single bond, we call those structures as conformations and we call this relative structure as conformation. Now, different types of configuration can be possible. For example, cis trans configuration or cis trans isomer or geometric isomers which arises from the different configurations of substituents on a double bond or a cyclic structure. We can have different configuration or stereo isomers in this case. For example, we also know enantiomers which arises from different configurations of substituents on a sp3 or tetrahedron carbon atom or other atom. In so, they are, these are the examples of stereo isomers because they have different configurations. In especially in case of polymers, we can have various tacticity as we discussed earlier in the beginning, which arises from the regularity in the configurations of successive stereo centers in polymer backbone. We gave examples like isotactic and syndactic polymers, where isotactic means the orientation of the groups in the stereo center are same when we go one after one, whereas in case of syndactic T we got alternate arrangements of the groups around stereo center and atarctic where there was no particular arrangement of these stereo centers. And these are examples of stereo regular polymers. Stereo regular polymers actually have significant effect about their property. So, if we change the say from example, isotactic polystyrene to syndactic polystyrene or atarctic polystyrene, the properties of the 
resulting polymer would be quite different from each other. Just to bring chirality in, in polymers in this pers perspective, chiral is the term used to describe objects which are non superimposable on their mirror image. And we know if a small organic molecule has chiral center, they show optical activity. Simplest chiral molecules that have an sp3 hybridized carbon atom to which four different groups are attached, we call that particular carbon as asymmetric carbon and they show optical activity. Now, in case of polymers, for example, if you have general structure like this, now if you look at this carbon, actually this carbon has all the four, these substituents are different, four groups which are attached to this carbon atom, they are all different. So, they are in true sense asymmetric because the four substituents are different. But in reality polymers do not show optically, optical activity because effectively the substituents from this side or substitution on this side are effectively almost same. So, especially first two atoms or first two groups are same both sides. So, basically no significant optical activity is shown by this type of polymers because the polymer chains residues attached to the asymmetric carbon atom are almost identical. We can have optical activity from polymers, but that is a special case where that is because of conformational and a different conformational arrangement which is not uh, scope of this, uh, this uh, course. Now, let we move to next uh, topic on polymerization of 1,3-butadiene and substituted butadiene. Now, for example, let us this substituted, substituted, um, substituted uh, 1,3-butadiene. Now, if you recall uh, your um, organic chemistry knowledge, this is the carbon number 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. Now, if you polymerize, we can either polymerize this double bond which will lead to 1, 2 polymerization. If we polymerize this double bond, we will lead to 3, 4 polymerization or we can actually have another 1, 4 type polymerization as well. So, in this case, we have this polymerization, we have 1, 2 polymerization. In this case, we have 3, 4 polymerization. So, the polymerization is attacking on carbon number 3 and carbon number 4. We can also have in this case 1, 4 polymerization. Now, this is more, more chances of this forming is more because when a active center either a cation radical or or a anion happens, then it can actually participate in resonance conjugation to form and proceed the polymerization in this fashion. Now, this 1, 4 polymers can also have 2 stereoisomers. For example, this is a double bond and we know that Ac across the double bond we can have cis arrangement or trans arrangement. So, basically we can have a cis 1, 4 polyisoprene, this is the isoprene molecule. So, this is and this is the structure of natural rubber and if you can look at this uh, the structure that they are not very regular. Hence, this polymer cannot actually form orderly crystalline structure and, and as a result they are amorphous rubbery materials. Whereas, if we talk about Gutta Porcha or Balata which are predominantly trans 1,4 isoprene, look at the structure, they are actually very orderly structure. So, they can, so 
so many polymer chains actually come and order one after one to form crystalline domains. As a result, these trans 1,4 polyisoprene are hard and rigid material. So, basically these you can see the stereo different stereo isomers from same polymer can have different morphology and as a result they can have different properties altogether as we have seen for natural rubber and gutta burcha and balata. Now, in free radical polymerization for substituted 13 butadiene a high portion of trans 14 repeat unit especially at if the reaction happens at reduced temperature. Now, that is because if we look at the propagation step, this is where your active center happens and this is a planar molecule. So, the next attack on this carbon atom would be from the other side because of steric other side of the plane because of the steric region and as a result trans isomers are pre preferred. But if we increase temperature then there is a possibility of rotation around this single bond and as a result this loss of preference of trans isomers are kind of lost. So, as a result we also get cis form happening if we increase the temperature. So, basically if we do this reaction at lower temperature we are likely to get trans isomer, but if we do at higher temperature we can get mixture of both trans and cis isomer. Now, if we do a an ionic polymerization of this monomer in non-polar solvent lithium ion has a counter ion then this lithium ion will be tightly bound with this anionic propagating center and the incoming monomer will actually coordinate with this like this forming a six membered ring and as a result we thus the there is a similar arrangement of around this double bond and as a result we get cis 1 4 repeat units in this case. Now, if we instead of non polar solvent if we use polar solvent or if we use a larger cation other than lithium ion then this tight ion pair formation is lost and as a result this will be separated and the chances of forming or trans uh, are trans 1 4 repeat unit will be much higher. So, anionic polymerization in non polar solvent using counter ions other than lithium or in polar solvent regardless of the counter ion the stereochemical control this control is lost. So, we are we are likely to get more what we got in earlier case more trans isomer. For example, if you look at this table where butadiene when you used free radical polymerization at lower temperature we are getting more more uh, trans uh, more trans uh, isomer if we increase the temperature some cis isomer is also forming the extent of trans isomerization is coming down as we explained because of rotation around the single bond but if we increase the substituent size since from a butyrene to a isoprene then this steric preference increases. So, at the same temperature now you can see we are generating more trans isomer because the attack from the other side is more favorable because of the presence of more higher sized substituent. So, if you increase the size of the substituent and if you do at lower temperature we are going to get likely to get more trans isomer. Look at the data for anionic polymerization of butadiene using lithium ion. When you use a non-polar solvent at 20 degree, you see this mostly cis is cis isomer is forming. But when you use 
polar solvent like diethyl ether, then this is lost, then we get 1 to isomerization, then this preference of stereo control is lost. But if we increase the size of the substituent and you use do again we do a non-polar solvent, then you see even higher amount of a higher proportion of cis 14 isomer is produced. So, basically if we by looking at this table and with the understanding we can use you know what is our target if you want to use trans trans uh, product trans 13 butadiene then we should use uh, a radical polymerization at lower temperature if you want to do cis then we should use an ionic polymerization at at with lithium ion as counter and in a non polar solvent and so on so this gives uh, idea about uh, what uh, we should do if we want a specific uh, type of um, polymer is polymer from 13 butadiene and substitute substituted 13 butadiene now we'll discuss now about tacticity of polymer synthesized uh, by radical or ionic chain polymerization in normal what we discussed earlier now in this case the tacticity of a polymer is controlled by the stereochemistry of propagation propagating center basically now in case of a chain polymerization for radical the propagating center is a radical and for a cationic polymerization the propagating center is a cation and for an ionic polymerization it is anion now when this propagating center is radical or cation then this is a sp3 hybridized carbon so this is a planar molecule planar uh, molecule and in case of anionic although it is sp3 hybridized but because of the presence of substituent y we remember remember that anionic polymerization only possible when the anion is stabilized by resonating substituent as a result you effectively get a double bond of with the substituent and we get a sp2 hybridized carbon atom so basically in all these three cases we have a planar structure as a result when the next monomer attacks is basically generally attacks on the opposite side of the existing substituent as a result we generally have a tendency to form syn diatectic isomers but again if we increase temperature then because of this rotation of this uh, uh, single bond as is shown here then this stereo control is lost then we are likely to get a random arrangement of this stereo center so we are more likely to get a attractic polymerization so once again if we do a polymerization at very low temperature we might get uh, a trans uh, or syndiatectic arrangement whereas if we do at a moderate to high temperature we are likely to get a atactic polymers and for isotactic we cannot probably make uh, with this simple radical polymerization we need special technique we will discuss little later now as we said that we cannot uh, make uh, very stereo specific or stereo regular polymers using radical or ionic polymerization and that is overcome by uh, this ziegler natta polymerization we use, which basically uses coordination uh, as a step and we also call this ziegler natta polymerization as coordination polymerization now it was first discovered by uh, carl ziegler in, in 1950s in germany he basically polymerized ethylene in presence of trialkyl aluminum at high temperature and pressure to get a oligomer type molecular weight which is highest molecular weight is of, was about 5000 so this is not a useful polymer because this doesn't have a proper uh, enough or required amount of mechanical properties for polyethylene to be applicable but 
when he used along with this organometallic compound a transition metal compounds either titanium, vanadium or chromium, then this polymerization can be done at lower temperature and pressure yielding high molecular polyethylene. This polyethylene also much less branched and compared to the polyethylene synthesized by radical polymerization as a result this polymers can actually crystallize and form more more highly straight highly uh, useful polymers polyethylene. So, this has actually uh, was a was a very giant discovery which actually enables synthesis of high molecular weight polyethylene which is a very important and commonly used polymer. Later on Natta in Italy 1965 used similar catalyst system, but instead of ethylene he showed that it can be actually used for alpha olefins like polypropylene or like propylene or propene and using same catalyst described by Ziegler, he actually succeed to get stereoselective polymerization both isoselective as well as syndirective. And this is a this was a huge achievement since we just discussed that alpha olefins cannot be polymerized to high molecular weight polymers by radicals and other ionic initiators especially with stereoselective or stereo control like if you want isoselective isotactic or syndirectic polymers. And as a result Ziegler and Natta uh, was uh, combinedly given or awarded the Nobel Prize in 1963. So, this uh, I think this uh, this year is probably this there is a mistake in this year. There is a common example of uh, commercial polymers by Ziegler Natta um, polymerization are high density polyethylene which are the name suggests high density that means it is highly crystalline it is a low branching highly crystalline high density and it is denser tougher higher melting point because more regular structure uh, which allows closer chain packing and it is the applications are in flaming films packaging sheets tubing wire, wires and cables. High molecular weight HDPE where the molecular weight is about 0.25 millions to 1.25 millions ultra high molecular weight HDP which has molecular weight higher than 1.5 million which is a highly abrasion resistant and impact stain. These are some of the some of these ultra high molecular HDP are used for knee replacement you know when some knees are gone bad. So, this type of polymers are used for replacing knees. LDP low density polyethylene which is uh, copoly polyethylene is copolymerized with slightly slight amount of one olefin and as a result some branching might happen and as a result this is a very uh, basically the branching happen as a result we get low density. Polypropylene which are very high strength high melting point very low density and also polymers form. 1 3 butyl dienes, uh, which are these are the common example of commercial polymers which are regularly synthesized by Ziegler Natta polymerization. There are two types of catalysts which are used for Ziegler Natta polymerization one is heterogeneous, and another is homogeneous, we will talk about that. The heterogeneous is a traditional Ziegler Natta initiator which was originally used by Ziegler and Natta. So, in this case they, they are actually combination of two, two catalysts or two compounds one is a transition metal compounds which is elements from groups 4 to group 8 this is used as catalyst and the generally say halides or oxyhalides of titanium, vanadium, chromium and zirconium and so on. And the second one is organometallic compound as we discussed alkyl aluminum. And this is actually a co-catalyst. So, these are these are hydrides or alkyls or aryls of metals such as this. 
and the most important from a commercial standpoint is a com either TiCl3 plus uh, alkyl aluminum or TiCl4 and alkyl al aluminum. And these organometallic compounds actually modify and activate the transition metal compounds for initiation. Now, for zeolanata polymerization, the catalyst preparation for catalyst preparation, we basically mix the components in dry condition and inert solvent are used in absence of oxygen, usually and done at low temperature. And the catalyst uh, having high reactivity towards many nonpolar monomers, high degree of stereoregularity. And the polymerization is generally carried out in a hydrocarbon solvent such as N hexane. Now, in heterogeneous polymerization, now most of the zeolanata components participate in a complex set of reaction involving alkylation and reduction of transition metal components by group 1, 3, group 1, 2, 3 components like TIC and 4 alc 3 So, basically it has two steps. Initially, there is an exchange, re exchange reaction between the two components we described. For example, this alkyl aluminum with TLCl4 producing these compounds and, and so on. This is very complex uh, reaction setup, but this is what generally happens. This can happen actually depending upon what you are using. And this can also generate uh, homolatively cleave to form um, radical which are basically quenched uh, by combinations or disproportion with them or reaction with solvent. Now, these are basically what is used for um, catalyst in poly zeolanata polymerization. And there is mainly two mechanism by which uh, zeolanata polymerization are described. One is monometallic mechanism, another is bimetallic mechanism. I will just describe briefly about these two mechanisms in just coming uh, slide. So, in monometallic mechanism, this one of the chlorine atom is removed. So, you get a vacant d orbital and these are actually chlorine and it, these are not shown just to make the picture uh, less complicated. So, one, once this one chlorine is removed, you get a one vacant d orbital is uh, generated on titanium, which actually complex with coordinate with uh, incoming monomer and which actually form a complex and as a result there is an insertion of this new monomer happen between titanium and carbon center and later because of the migration of this chain to the original place the stereoregularity is maintained. So, basically propagation occurs by insertion of monomer at a transition metal carbon bond as we described transition metal carbon bond there the insertion of the new monomer happened and the monomer is first complexed or coordinate with the empty d orbital of uh, titanium and this is the insertion reaction and because of the migration is basically re establish the vacant site on the surface of the catalyst. In case of bimetallic mechanism, the active site is an electron deficient bridge complex formed between the reaction of titanium atom and um, this alkyl uh, aluminum and In this case, this uh, propagation happened by insertion of the monomer at the group 1, 3, uh, 3 metal carbon atom. So, basically this is where the insertion happened, but at the first step coordination happens on the vacant orbital of titanium 
and once the coordination happens, there is a partial charge which gives kind of a six membered complex uh, intermediate formation and which results in insertion of aluminum a new monomer between aluminum and carbon center. This is very quite complicated uh, reaction mechanism. So, this is just briefly discussed and uh, and generally uh, for introductory courses uh, this mechanism um, one students are not expected to understand the mechanism completely. But uh, just for your understanding or basic understanding you should able to uh, remember or able to understand that there could be two uh, in case of heterogeneous polymer jiglanata polymerization there could be a monometallic mechanism and bimetallic mechanism. Now, in case of homogeneous uh, okay, before homogeneous we'll, we can just talk about the termination step. The termination can happen in case of Ziegler-Nata polymerization like uh, we had discussed for regular chain polymerization. Transfer can happen to monomers or internal hydrides transfer or transfer to co-catalyst or, or it can be quenched by addition of hydrogen and so on. So, this is just some equation you can go through the how this termination happen. And in case of non-polar monomers, the reactivity of the monomers actually decreases with increasing the steric hindrance about the double bond. So, basically this is the order as we increase the more and more steric hindrance of the monomer that incoming the coordination, the possibility of the coordination with the titanium that actually decreases because of the steric hindrance. So, so, the reactivity of the monomers for Ziegler-Nata um, polymerization decreases as we increase the steric hindrance about the double bond. Now, quickly uh, homogeneous Ziegler-Nata polymerization happen and that are used metal resins are used as a catalyst. Earlier the combination of these two were very popular as a metal resin catalyst, but nowadays the most important metallization catalysts are based upon zirconosine dichloride derivatives which are activated by reaction with methyl alumino oxen or in short MAO or MAO. So, this is the structure of methyl alumino oxen MAO and this is actually the main catalyst is zirconium this is activated by this uh, co-catalyst MAO. MAO. And this is the typical or general structure of metallization catalyst where AM is zirconium, titanium, hafnium and the X are chlorine or alkyl and rest of the terms are given here. So, later on you can actually see this uh, different groups which are basically useful for generating or obtaining a metallization catalyst. The metallization catalysts or homogeneous zigonata catalysts have some advantages, example narrow uh, molecular distribution than those prepared um, with homogeneous catalysis, better mechanical properties. Generally dispersity is a range of 2.25 compared to uh, the uh, heterogeneous catalysts which have a much higher 5 to 6 uh, dispersity value. And the molecular weight of metallization based polymers decreases with increasing polymerization temperature, increasing catalyst concentration and addition of hydrogen to monomer feed. These are the some commercial polymers uh, using heterogeneous uh, ziegler-nata and metallization um, catalysis or homogeneous ziegler-nata polymerization which we most of them which are we discussed uh, at the beginning. For example, using metallurgicians we can synthesize syndiatectic polymer, polymer polypropylene or syndiatectic polystyrene isotactic polymer polypropylene so on. So, with this I conclude our discussion on Ziegler-Nata polymerization or coordination polymerization. Next I will talk about some 
to ring opening polymerization.